Hi guys, welcome back to another video of our Selenium C Sharp .NET Core course. And today we are going to talk about how we can actually fix the issue that we were getting in our earlier video while we're trying to run this particular scenario. So the scenario actually is failing because we couldn't be able to spawn the browser and we have not told in our code anywhere to do that. Actually, in order to debug this, and if you have did this yourself, you might have already noticed that the first line of our code is actually given a navigate to the application. And if you just do an, a breakpoint over here, and if you try to do a debug over here, you can you can probably see this code and you can tell that this particular driver has not even been initialized. Basically, we did the initialization on the unit test 1.cs file but not on the spec flow, right? Because spec flow is different from the unit test onecs file. Unit test onecs file actually uses the NUnit framework to do it, whereas spec flow is completely a different testing wrapper. It even though it uses the NUnit, it is using a different instance of NUnit, not the unit test onecs file that we were using earlier. So now if I just go uh, do an step over, you can see that I actually have this driver as the null because the driver is not even been initialized. I mean, you can just do an initialization over here on this particular file and you can do it, but do you think this is a good way of doing it? Definitely not, right? I mean, in my BDD with a spec flow series, I have covered this particular feature as well in much greater detail, but because we are actually talking about it, we should be covering that particular stuff as well. You can't really jump into that particular video and keep looking at it every time, but because we are already in the flow, so we should just uh, make that flow to uh, work as expected. So for doing that, I'm actually gonna talk about what is called as a hooks of the spec flow. So if you just go to, uh, to your project, and oops over here we just right click it and add and just do something called as hooks so just create a separate uh, uh, folder called hooks right click add and put this new item and on the spec flow if you just choose it you can see that there is something called a spec flow hooks and they also tell, tell it as event bindings so this spec flow hooks is basically an event driven programming context basically if this happens then this particular event binding will be called automatically so that this may be anything it can be before test after test before scenario after scenario before feature or after feature before step or after step so all these events are basically is it's all basically like an event right i mean if your spec flow is basically starting to run uh it has a feature it has a scenario and it has steps on the scenario so you might need a control over your spec flow scenarios in a way that if my scenario is going to execute i want this to happen first before my scenario to execute or if my test fails i need to capture which step has got failed in my reporting probably. Or if I want to clean up my data in my scenario every time I run this particular scenario, I want the cleanup to happen initially. So all these kind of things that you can basically do using this event bindings or the spec flow hooks. Uh, so spec flow hook is pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna just hit an add there so you can see that the spec flow binding automatically being added and there is just two uh, attributes here one is the uh, before scenario and after scenario but there are many different attributes available you can see that for additional details on spec flow hooks go to this particular page where you can actually look at it but as i told you you can just do something like before uh, if you type it before you can see that it's before feature before scenario before scenario block and bef uh, before steps, before test run. So you can use any of these ad, uh, annotations, attributes, and you can work from there. So for doing that, first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, let's say as of now, because we only have one scenario, if I want to open a browser, I can just use before feature uh, or before scenario over here. And then I can just uh, do a driver or sorry, driver helper 
I'm written over here. I'm just going to copy paste the code that we already have on the setup and I'm going to paste it over here. And let's add the references, which is currently missing, which is the driver manager and the Chrome options. And once we have this in place, I think Chrome config as well. And once we have this in place, once the test execution is complete or once the scenario is completely done, we can also close the browser, which is the driver. So driver dot, uh, you can do a quit, which means it is going to quit the browser for you uh, once the testing is done. So now hopefully the test will run without any problem if I'm not wrong. Uh, so technically it should run. So you can put a breakpoint over here and you can just do a debug. That's a good practice. So every time you feel you have written some code and you want to uh, ensure that the code will work as expected or not, you should put a breakpoint. And now you can see that once I debug this code, this debug point should actually hit over here before even it start executing the scenario. So if I'm not wrong, you can see that the breakpoint has been hit over here. So the scenario has not even started executing. If it would have, uh, it would have already uh, thrown us an error because our step definition actually uh, for this particular step definition actually has a breakpoint. So it has not even hit. So it had directly hit the uh, before scenarios uh, breakpoint, which means it's an event be being triggered, which is before a scenario. Uh, and now it is coming over here and it is setting the driver for us, which is pretty awesome. So you can see that now it is calling the driver, it is setting it. And we know that the driver manager is a uh, driver helper actually has a static driver over there and it is going to manage things for you automatically. So now you can see that this breakpoint has been hit and this driver was null before. And now you can see that it is not null, it is a Chrome driver. So which means, if I'm not wrong, it is going to execute all of the tests for us without any problem. But before that, I actually forgot to do one more thing, which is to remove the headless because it's not going to show the browser for us and you don't even know what's really happening. This time, I'm very confident, I guess the test will run without any problem. So I'm just running it without debugging it. So I see that the browser has been spawned there. And now it should navigate me to the uh, eaapp.sami.com website. I should click that login link. It should enter the username and password. There you go. The test card passed. Amazing, right? So this is how we did a conversion of our existing unit test uh, test to the spec flow test much, much easier much, much easily in a few lines of code change and probably the same process, but just that the spec flow has its magic wand to show the pretty easily readable uh, scenario for us, whereas the step definition is completely abstracted and sitting on the separate class file in a more readable and excellent way or elegant way of showing us how the code has to be written. But now you can see that there are many other problems as well. I mean, you have the home page sitting over here, which is not the right way of doing it. I mean, you cannot just keep maintaining that over here. Uh, and similarly, uh, you cannot really have the driver helper just, you know, going through many different class files. Those things are not, not the right way of doing it. And that's what I have really covered in even more deeper fashion in the advanced series, like how you should be doing it. But at the moment, uh, for the basics, for the getting started, you are pretty good to go, at least with this video, uh, with this particular code base. But but yes, um, I think that this is what, uh, this is how you should be using the spec flow on the, uh, on the Selenium C sharp with .NET Core. And there is no difference from here uh, with any other videos I have in the BDD with spec flow for the full framework of C sharp. So that's it. This is how you can use the uh, spec flow with .NET Core uh, and how you can utilize that within your project. So once again, thank you for watching this video and you guys have a great day.